I wonder what we're going to talk about. Not much has happened around the West Virginia sports world, around West Virginia's football program. Yeah, I say that sarcastically because a lot has happened. West Virginia has hired a new athletic director. Neil Brown is going to stay on as head coach for at least another season and a lot more as well to discuss. I'm Mike Oste. That is West Virginia football legend Rasheed Marshall. And this is All Three Phases here brought to you by WV Sports Now. You can also find us everywhere you get your podcasts. If you don't want to watch us, you can listen to us only. You can do it on the run. You can do it while driving. I actually do sometimes listen to this show on a run or while driving to and from campus to cover the Mountaineers. And you can do that on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, etc. So Rashid, first off, it has been a while. We're going to get to your thoughts on Ren Baker, Neil Brown, what to do with the quarterback position, because there's a lot to do with a lot of these positions on this roster. Still a lot we don't know yet with the transfer portal. You may not know something one day, learn it the next day, and then not know it again the day after. But how was your Thanksgiving? How was your holiday? It's my favorite holiday. It's about food, family, and football. So it was fantastic for me, but how was yeah. it for you? It was good, Mike. Uh, pretty much the same thing, family. Now, that's my one day. That's my one day out of 365 <laughs> days that I do not get out of bed until I'm absolutely ready. I don't have any restrictions. I don't have any anything <laughs> holding me back. So I lay there okay. literally until I'm ready to get out of bed. And, uh, man, I felt great the, that morning of Thanksgiving. Probably slept about 10 to 12 hours. It was pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, and I went wow. out the night before too. So okay, so you did do that. Day. See, I'm I feel like I'm getting old and you're older than me to go out the night before. So I'm impressed. Yeah. You went out the special night before. Special occasion, you. man. Special occasion. <laughs> friend's birthday. You uh, know, all the guys in town. So we went out, had a good time. Now, do you do you binge on Thanksgiving? Like, did you knock out turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes, whatever? What's your favorite food item on the table? It's a, it's a normal day for me, you know. Uh okay. I do the turkey, but it has okay. to be deep fried. If it's not a deep fried turkey, wow. I don't yeah, I had okay. it once and I could never go back to oven yeah, roast yeah. it. But uh yeah. yeah, so what I do is uh like a like a roasted chicken. Um, you know, my mother, she puts it down. So yeah, it's 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 good, man. <laughs> I you know, would imagine family stopping in, you know, my aunts, they cook. Yeah. So yeah, good. Awesome. Yeah, and, and so then you're like me, you get to enjoy all the food and you don't have to cook it yourself. I've been able to have a life of somebody else doing the cooking and I get to enjoy it all. That's why I love Thanksgiving yeah. so much, but yeah. Awesome. I try to contribute, Great. though. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I hate to I usually do the dishes candy. sometimes. I, I, I end up being, right. That's I end up being the dishwasher to contribute in that in that, in that that yeah. form, if nothing else. I also like to clean the table for everybody. And I let the leftovers linger all the way to the next week. I would manage to get two, three, four days out of those leftovers. So that's right. a big win. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a leftover guy. That's It's not my thing, man. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, back, I'm back on track the next day. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 I got, I'm, I'm off track until the leftovers are gone. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it <laughs> that way. Go. I'm never, I'm never on your way of being on track. Again, Rashid Marshall here. This all three phases. Of course, Mike Oste, WV Sports Now. And Thanksgiving is gone. It is over, unfortunately. But Thanksgiving came and went. And then soon after Thanksgiving, we got some major news. And that is the way, and we're going to start with AD first and go around the docket here. West Virginia Mountaineers bring on Ren Baker from North Texas. I did a whole show kind of to let the fans know who he is because I don't know how many were familiar. He wasn't one of the names that was mentioned by a lot of us in media or really anybody at all. I know Pat White did bring up Matt Borman who had ties to West Virginia had been there a while. They know each other. Well, this is a guy and we've talked about this before Rashid on whether or not having West Virginia ties is a big deal for a head coach, for an AD, for any type of position. At West Virginia. There are now coaches that don't have West Virginia ties. Neil Brown doesn't have West Virginia ties. Neither does Graham Harrell. That's the current staff. And then you get to Ren Baker. No West Virginia ties either. From North Texas, as I said. Memphis and Missouri before that. North Texas is where he really ran his own ship. It's a group of five, but he he won a lot there and did a lot for them. Five bowl games since 2016. They they hadn't been in, in that many prior in their whole program history. And of course, did it beyond football with basketball and the Olympic sports as well. He's active on social media. He's a young guy in his early 40s. He's already sliding in the DMs of, of Pat McAfee trying to repair that relationship. <laughs> so what what are your thoughts on the program bringing on Ren Baker? We'll get to Neil Brown being retained here in a moment. But just Ren Baker in general, had you heard the name before? What have you heard now since? Do you like the vibe of kind of a, a younger and maybe uh, maybe cooler 
athletic director now in charge of things at West Virginia? Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, I don't think anyone can truly say that he was on the radar. Right. Um, he's not a familiar name to West Virginia, WVU, anything associated with the state. Um, yes, at North Texas, he was very successful. Um, and a lot of their sports did well. Uh, football, some conference championships, basketball. Um, yeah, so so he did well there. And, you know, I think it's the best person to fit the job for that. I mean, an AD can be a number of people coming from different positions. Um, but if I had to imagine, they did their research, did the homework, and uh, thought he was the best candidate. So, um, listen, I'm on board uh, based off of his resume. I like what I saw. And, listen, I think he can put West Virginia in a position to where, you know, we can truly start to get that momentum back and kind of bring things to the top across the board and not just football, you know, hoops yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. A lot of the women's sports because, listen, they're all important. They all are important, and you want to have a legit program overall, which West Virginia normally prides themselves on having. And they've had success across the board in athletics, not so much football recently, the basketball program, the men's, getting back going after maybe a dip uh, a, a year ago, the women's team in a new era, the women's soccer team won the Big 12. So it's not just about football, but of course, football drives the bus. Football is, let's be honest a money maker it's it the is money, the maker. money maker absolutely conference alignment it's all about who's attractive football wise this is all about football as shane lyon said when he did his uh, little media car wash circuit recently <laughs> if the football team won a couple more games we probably wouldn't be having this conversation he probably would still be ad so it is it, it, it is about football that's just the truth of it one thing i think i really liked about ren baker's resume as well and i'm not gonna lie and pretend i was really familiar with him outside of seeing what happened in north texas prior to the hire or was aware of it i got a call actually the morning of the news that hey ren baker is a tip he might be the guy and i had to do a quick search myself i was like what do you mean i heard like these seven other names and then right. all of a sudden an hour later you get the national media report and then a few hours later you get the press release sent to us, and, and it is Rand Baker. But that he really has had success financially, meaning he's been able to do a lot with boosters at North Texas, bring a lot of money to that school. And again, that's a group of five. That that was not a program that had the finances prior to him that they had with him. So he really put those teams and programs in position to succeed financially. And when you couple that with already getting involved with Country Roads Trust, which is major in terms of nil and that's a major deal obviously for west virginia they're trying to help west virginia athletes get nil money and then you factor in let's be honest i do actually like that he's a bit younger i think his age is a positive thing in terms of relating to these athletes all of that is checking a lot of boxes so they definitely did their homework probably more than than us because again i wasn't expecting ren baker but Without he seems doubt. like he, yeah he seems like he could be a fit and i don't mind that he doesn't have west virginia ties i know that that is, a, is something for some people but hey i think he fits right now what some people some fans maybe don't think fits anymore is the head coach neil brown he's been there four years three out of four years have been losing seasons they only had three losing seasons from 1999 to 2018 he gets there in 2019 to now it's three out of four losing seasons as of the one bowl win but three out of four there's there's no way to make that sound any better he's going to be back for at least one more season his contract goes longer but obviously if it's another losing year i'd imagine they would then pull the plug he's had conversation with ren he's had conversation with gordon gee obviously the departure of shane lyons that seemingly was a rift of relationships that he had with gordon gee and others and now Ren's trying to pick up the pieces there, and Neil Brown's going to continue on. And that yeah. will do one of two things. It will at least provide some continuity there, and it also will keep, you would imagine, the recruiting class intact, which is a top 35 recruiting class, really at the worst for what anyone's calling it, if not some saying top 30. Those kids flat told me they, they, they want to be committed, but they're going to wait and see about Brown, and they want to play for Brown and that staff. He is back. That should preserve them. And by the time West Virginia waited for this decision, a lot of the other coaches that were prominent names around the country had already been picked off and hired by other schools. So who were they really going to get? Regardless, they do run it back with Brown. What are your thoughts on another season of Neil Brown? Do you think he still can be the guy to turn this around, get this headed in the right direction, do what he said when he was hired to bring it back to glory? Or would you have rather than been more proactive and, and tried to get one of these guys that have been hired 
you know, Deion Sanders' name yeah. is still out there. Um, but Brown's back. He's the head coach. So what are your thoughts on another year? Of yeah, Brown? listen, I'll say this. Right now, Neil Brown is the head coach, all right? He's not going anywhere, whether you like it or not. Right. He is the guy, and I'm going to back him. I'm going to support him. I've never been a Neil Brown hater. Do what I like to see my alma mater do a lot better on the football field in terms of production. Of course, he's the guy for next year. I will continue to support. And listen, you want to see you want to see the best product hit the field. He's going to be the guy leading the troops. So I'm going to support Um, right now. I'm sure there's a lot of disgruntled people. A lot of people probably wanted to see him out the door. Yeah, I'm 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 100 percent back in this whole football team, the administration for making a decision. Um, and you made a point about Rem Baker. Um, you know, the one thing that people tend to overlook, there's more to being a, an athletic director than just, you know, uh, <laughs> s- scheduling and, yeah. uh, you it's know, not a figurehead sure. role. Like some may see you're, you're shaking hands and kissing babies, but you're also doing thousand other things in addition. To exactly. That. Right. And one of those right. is I, I've done a lot of work with the Mac, um, WVU Mac, which is the Mountain Air Athletic Club, when they raise money, things like that, especially this past season. But okay. when you have strategies, tactics, things that can can generate money and you know get people excited about the future, that's a skill set. And if he has that skill set, listen, he's going to be the guy for the job because West Virginia, uh, we need the state back and we need support to you know, get the donors excited and, and push that money in. So, yeah. um, yeah, listen, I'm on board. Um, I think the Oklahoma, Oklahoma state win, you know, generated some momentum and listen, they just have to build, you know, uh, going into the off season, they are in a good position to where they can say, Hey, listen, we finished this thing on a high, high note. Let's try to keep this momentum going through the off season. So yes, um, this is a point to build, you know, and, and and yeah, that is all true. And they did actually end the season relatively strong, which you got to give the kids credit for that because the season was clearly going nowhere to still be motivated to try to get those wins. First time in program history that West Virginia beats Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the same season. They also had the win over Baylor. They did actually defend the Black Diamond Trophy, even though Virginia Tech's not good. So what does that mean? But it's a big deal for West Virginia. Weird to have all that occur in such a bad season, though. You miss a bowl game and do all of that. And they almost beat TCU, who's undefeated and, and, and playing for the Big 12 title and then a playoff spot. So it's just really, really odd. They did play up to a lot of opponents. Maybe play down to others. They had some really bad moments, but they did finish strong. And maybe that helped sell another year of Neil Brown. In addition to, and I mentioned to this to you this before, because we do a lot of recruiting coverage. It is kind of amazing to me that despite three out of four losing seasons, he's been able to do so well recruiting wise. So he has done really well recruiting. You now have an athletic director that's on the young side, really good with money. They have some coaches that bring some interesting system certainly Graham Harrell still has a lot of value around the country people still Mm -hmm. like to play for him even though the offense didn't do what many thought it would this year he does run a balanced offense not really the traditional air raid so that was something that I'm sure a lot of running backs were happy to see and there there are those positives but again three out of four losing seasons a lot of people were fed up and they thought maybe they should be more proactive and try to get somebody else not the case though Neil Brown is back Rashid Marshall here, West Virginia football legend. It is all three phases here on WV Sports Now. Now, you mentioned that you do a lot of work with the Mountaineer Athletic Club or been doing it this past season. So I do kind of want to pivot to ask this. And I asked you off air, but I do want to just get this on the record because Pat McAfee said that Ren Baker slid in his DMs and at the time (laughs) it would have been at the time he said that, that would only have meant that Ren Baker was sliding in less than 24 hours after the news came out that he was AD, and obviously they talked and he knew prior. But that's a pretty high priority to try to repair that thing with Pat McAfee, who also, funny enough, said that he hasn't responded yet. Um, so I don't know when that's going to happen. But right now they have not talked. But obviously Pat, critical of the team the regular season, called him the most disappointing. Him and Brown kind of went at it a little bit. Brown refused yeah, to answer yeah. my question when I asked him about it. And I think we all know that Neil Brown has been on social media. So he yeah, maybe told me a little fib. Uh, and then, you know, Pat <laughs> also said he doesn't have much of a relationship with the athletic program. And he wants one. And he also was open. But after 13-9, he didn't feel welcome in the whole state of West Virginia, let alone the city of Morgantown and on campus. 
for a yeah. decade or so. So that seems to have been repaired. Neil Brown tried to repair that right away. But then it appears that now we're kind of back to square one with Pat McAfee here. He is obviously the alum with the biggest <laughs> biggest platform possible. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, for so sure. He, yep. so, and you got others, obviously. Pac-Man Jones was at the brawl. Mark Bolger was at the brawl. You were at the brawl. You are involved, obviously. Pat White's still talking to West Virginia, even though he's working – for, has worked for other programs and work in the NFL and who knows where after. But I'll ask you just point blank, or do you, number one, you know, what is your relationship with the athletic program now, especially the football program? What kind of has it been? What are your thoughts on Pat McAfee and other Mountaineer greats like yourself and their relationship? What kind of is the conversation amongst you always tell me about the former player group text? What's that? like right now what's the vibe after Ren being hired and Neil Brown being retained and any of their comments on their relationships with the program right now because a lot of fans are wondering especially off of what Pat McAfee is saying why is West Virginia distancing itself from these former athletes or I even had a fan today say well I would know why Rasheed Marshall and others and Owen Smith aren't wanting to do anything with the program because they're losing but that's not true. I mean, obviously, you're no, not trying not to. Your, that's not true at all. So clear this up. What is the relationship between the former great athletes and the program right now? Is it where you want it to be? Should it be better? What's those conversations like? What do you want from the university in terms of your involvement? What has it been like with the Mountaineer Athletic Club that maybe you know it could be again in the future? Give the Rashid Marshall take, I guess. Yeah. So I, I think it all boils down to. Uh, your own preferential uh, decision on on how you feel like you've been treated. Now, let's start with Pat McAfee. Pat, over the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years in yeah. terms of uh, social media presence, in terms of media figures, Pat McAfee is the guy. All right. So listen, if there's one player that said they have not had a good relationship with administration throughout WVU athletics, He's the yeah. guy to reach out to. So I can, <laughs> yeah. I can see why Ren uh, Baker would, would jump into the DMs of Pat. I mean, yeah. listen, let's, let's, yeah. let's talk, you know? Yeah. Um, but again, you have to be able to manage your relationships. Um, again, I do not have a bad word to say about Neil Brown and his staff. They had me back a few years ago. You talked about it. We, everyone knows yeah. about it. The whole yeah. uniform thing. I did not see that coming from anywhere. All right. Um, from there, you, you continue to just nurse relationships. It's just like anything else, uh, friends, family. So for some guys to go away for however many years it's been, I think that that same red carpet is going to be rolled out and you haven't been around. It's going to be tough. I mean, yes, you, you, you should have somewhat of a, uh, obligation to be able to get feel pack, yeah. whatever it might be, you know? Um, but at the same time, you can't just think the red carpet's going to be rolled out yeah for you i get that there's you can't, no no yeah, contact you, you know you have to, to keep be, the relationship alive it, it, it's, so. it's, it's, it's a two-way street in any relationship of any walk of life somebody says well, i haven't heard from you in a while you haven't texted me in a while or a friend or whoever someone you know well yeah, you haven't texted borrow- me i haven't heard from you so it, it works both ways so but are I guess it appears like a lot of the former athletes, though, are saying that they would preferred they would have preferred to have a better relationship, but one hasn't been offered to them. I know, for example, and he's been public with this, so I'll throw the name out. Mike Logan, who I've had on shows, he also told me he didn't think he was fully welcome there for yeah. a while, mostly under Dana Holgerson. Is that what you're hearing? And why do you think that is? Because I'm sure that would be his response to you saying that it's a two-way street. He would say, well, I didn't feel like they were extending the invitation to me. Do you got to get on the phone and call and say, hey, can I come down as well? Like, why is it like this? I, I, it just shouldn't be this confusion and this angst in this relationship yeah. with the athletes. It's funny you mention Mike you. Logan because I was in a barbershop two days ago and I <laughs> ran into Mike and we talked about awesome. you. Your name came up actually. Awesome. Yeah. But, I haven't um, talked to him in a while, but he's a real yeah, good guy. Yeah. He really is. Um, you know, I think there needs to be the common theme amongst all the former players and the uh, the narrative behind it is we need to have more uh, former player. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just more engagement. All right. More events, more 
okay. things that's going to bring us together as as collectively as alumni. Um, that's what I'm hearing. You know, I, I, I can't necessarily say it's individuals, but get us all together. Let's let's do a pregame tailgate. Let's and some of those things were in place. Dale Wolfley, he did a good job with yeah. some of that stuff. Now you have to take part in it. You know, uh, you have to be <laughs> proactive. You have to right. answer emails. You have to get right. on the mailing list. Um, the opportunities are there, um, you know, but I think it's more of a collective. Hey, listen, we're going to we're going to have a big event. Let's get all the alumni in. Let's get you guys in. Let's give you tours. Let's do all that stuff. And they try to do it. Um, now, whether or not you read the emails, whether or not you're on the list to sign up for all that stuff, now that's on you because the opportunities have been there. But, you know, mm -hmm. some people, I think individually, they just feel as though they've been slighted. And that's all I can say about that. Yeah, it does definitely appear like some feel they've been slighted. It also appears that some almost feel like maybe because we're talking about it being a two way street with any relationship that the invitation should be. I guess, offered to them in a more aggressive manner. It almost comes across like some feel, you know, like when you get invited to a party the day before and you're like, okay, I appreciate the invite, but this is the day before. It's like, a, I don't really feel like you want me there. This is almost a mercy invite that you feel like you're right, obligated right, to do right, this. Right. It's, a That's pity. How it, it's a pity. Yeah, it's, it's a pity invite. That's almost how it comes across a little bit. Cause Owen Smith replied to one of my tweets about this saying they have my number. Basically it, it came across like they got to call me. So I, I, I don't, again, I don't know if he's not seen an email or he wants them to call him. And it's almost like one of those, you, you know, you break up with somebody. Well, let's try to be friends. Okay. Well, you call me and go out to dinner. Oh, I'm not going to make the phone call. So no, well, you didn't call me. I'm going to call you. Like neither one of them actually wants to take the step to do it because it's a yeah. little awkward maybe right now. Let me ask you a question. How many players are on a collegiate football roster? Just take a guess. Are you talking about, well, just take seven, a guess. Seven, 70 some right now, I think overall, and they travel less, obviously less than that, like 50 some. Okay. So we'll say upwards of about, say, 85 guys. All right. Freshmen, uh, red shirts, okay. walk ons. And, it, and you so I was close. Okay. Very, yeah. 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 You could very well get into the 90s. Okay. Um, do you think a coach has time to reach out to a former player to? Well, that's true. You is know, it, is it the again, job of the coach or is it the it job also, of somebody else? Could be someone, someone else. else do I, I don't, I don't, where's, where's the, you know, where's the people who are complaining about it? Where's the, uh, where do they think that should be coming from? Is it, yeah, I guess that's a where's good the question. discrepancy coming from, you know, right, that's a good question. Um, now, if you have a prior relationship with a coach and you guys are in touch, that's completely different. Personally, I would never expect a coach to reach out to me to invite me to a game. There's okay. a million other things happening, you know. Now, on the flip side of that, I might pick up the phone, call this coach, call that coach. Hey, and here we go. We're staying in touch. Yeah. So, listen, it, it, it can vary from person to person. You know, Owen Schmidt was a prominent figure sure. for WVU football. Um I'm sure he would be welcome with open arms and there's a part on his end that has to be handled as well. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, then that, that's very, very fair, but it, it just, it's, it's just an odd thing because West Virginia does have a lot of distinguished alums who are around the region, certainly. And, and then, you know, yourself, Mike Logan, not far away from Pittsburgh. A lot of them are still in West Virginia. Others certainly have the ability to fly around the country. Pat McAfee got the money to fly in. There, there's a lot of people that are really notable figures that have been around the program. Not every program has this many. I mean, West Virginia is very fortunate to have yeah. so many notable figures that have been around the program and have success the program and are still doing it big now. And and it does seem like a swing and a miss by the program to not be able to leverage that better, honestly. I agree. But I agree. I don't know if it's a swing and a miss or there are some maybe former players making that difficult or not reading an email, not respond to an email, or if someone does call you from the athletic program, and it's because as you're saying, maybe you get a phone call from a grad assistant, and it's not Neil Brown, who obviously is very busy, and if there's ever a time where you're like, well, it's a grad assistant, I'm not going to talk to him, I want to talk to the big dog, because I was getting it done on the football field, 
well, that I mean, then that's making it hard to have the relationship oh, yeah. because yeah. this is the guy that was free to make the phone call. So you just don't really know. Um, in terms of your personal relationship, though, you mentioned the Mountaineer Athletic Club. What what have you been doing? What are you planning on doing? I, have you had any con- communication with? Did Ren slide in your DMs? <laughs> uh, no, he hasn't. He hasn't jumped <laughs> in my DMs. Okay. Uh, no. So this past season, basically, um, you know, there were a few opportunities to reach out to fans. Um, you know, short videos. Hey, former quarterback Rashid Marshall. Uh, we would like to thank yeah. you for your support. You know, things like that. And those are the small things that can go a long way. Um, I'm not asking for anything behind that. Listen, I get an email, I get a call, I get a text. Hey, can you help us out? Can you do us a favor? And my relationship with the university goes a little bit deeper uh, just because I've done a lot of media work with WVU, uh, AT&T Sportsnet, Root Sports, you know. uh, So, yeah, my relationship is a little bit different, uh, different department. So I've reached out, I've talked to, I've uh, initiated and built relationships through a bunch of different avenues. Um, not everyone can say that. So I can see why some players would be disgruntled, uh, a little mad about it, a little pissed off. But <laughs> listen, it's, it's not hard to to yeah. truly reach out and, and just try to say, hey, listen, I want to start coming around a little more. West Virginia is a special place. Morgantown is a very special place. WVU is a very special place. You're not going to get turned away. I promise. I also, yeah, I can agree with that as well. Being around as media, I was no former player, obviously, but I, I can agree with that. That I cannot, envi- I cannot envision a scenario where any of the players that we mentioned, or even others that haven't been mentioned, Stedman Bailey's another one. Noel Devine, I actually talked to him not long ago. Any, or even maybe less in terms of star power, any former player that played a down, I'm sure it shows up. They're going to welcome him in, give him a tour. Yeah say, hey, this person did this. And then obviously if you're a real former star, if it's yourself, Pat White or Pat McAfee or whoever, they're going to do even more probably. So I cannot imagine that if you just randomly show up, they're going to close the door in your face. If you make a phone call, they're not going to answer the phone or call you back or or DM you back. I'm still waiting to see what that conversation was like because Pat hasn't responded to Ren. So (laughs) Pat, if you're you're watching or listening, please respond to Ren Baker and let's have a conversation. I feel like, yeah, that that – that got to be better. It got to be repaired. It, I don't know if it's swinging and miss in the athletic program or maybe individuals. I really, really don't know. But I cannot imagine the athletic program would turn any of those guys away. And if they are, then that's that's just ridiculous. But I, yeah. I cannot imagine that to be the case. Rasheed March from Mike Osti. Again, it is all three phases here with WV Sports now. And, of course, everywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, tune in, tune in Spotify, Stitcher, etc. Now, moving to the team, because – you know, we can't repair the relationships, but with the former players, because it doesn't matter, they can't get on the football field, even though they certainly can impact the program. The players that are on the field are the only ones they really can impact the wins and losses right now from a literal sense. And when you're talking with Rasheed Marshall, when you're talking about the football team, you got to go to the quarterback position. And West Virginia has, I don't want to call it a controversy, but it's a weird situation. Okay, you bring in JT Daniels this year as a guy with a couple years of eligibility left that really it's now only one more year thanks to COVID because he's been hurt a lot, but he's been around a while. A veteran QB. Around. Yeah, he's been around a while. Not one more year left, though. But a veteran QB, he's had success before, did it at USC, was leading them through the Pac-12, was with Georgia. They were winning, but then he kept getting hurt, lost his job because of the injuries, he believes. They won the national championship, so he needed to look somewhere else uh, to play football. Had a relationship with Graham Harrell, thought he could increase his value and then maybe get himself into the draft or or make some money at the pro level. He certainly has a great NIL deal that we talked about off the air, but make Mm -hmm. even more money than that. That didn't really work out, okay? He had a solid start to the year. The team wasn't winning when he was playing well. He eventually did lose his job to Garrett Green, who is that young spark plug, a sophomore, he sat the year earlier under Jared Daggy. A lot of fans thought he should have got in at the end of that, of, of that season two years ago because Daggy was struggling. Daggy was ushered out the door. He had a year left of eligibility, and he had to transfer and then transfer again, actually. Garrett Green played well, got the win over Oklahoma, then didn't really play that well against Kansas State. And then you also have Nico Markiel, who is the top 
recruit now who's still very, very young, was a freshman. Who knows about red shirt or eligibility for the future, but he's going to have many years left and has tons of talent as well. West Virginia fans got to see him more than ever before against Oklahoma State in that win. Prior to that, only playing against an FCS team earlier in the season against Townsend. So now on the roster still includes JT Daniels, Garrett Green, and Nico. The assumption for me is that JT would, would transfer again for a fourth time in his career to guarantee he can start somewhere else or else he's taking a gigantic risk if he comes back and he ends up being a backup with no more years of eligibility left. And he did not increase his value enough to go pro. He's not playing the NFL right now. He's not making that money. Garrett Green's there, played well, but are you sold enough? Because they were open saying they weren't sold enough prior to him having the spark plug game against Oklahoma. And then Nico, also Neil Brown said he wasn't ready earlier, but he's ready now and he played well. But you imagine he's under Garrett Green. He's been waiting a while and they're both young. What should they do at QB? What do you think is going to happen at QB? And then just how does this shake out? It probably is going to be a QB competition, I'd imagine, this coming summer but it is you rather have them. yeah you, you like to have a situation where you have some options when you're trying to rebuild things here but it's almost like they have too many options that it is a little bit of a headache now because if nico doesn't play and garrett green just started you got to imagine that nico's pro- maybe going to transfer to get on the field then you lose the guy that was your your diamond in the rough off of the recruiting the recruiting yeah. game from a year earlier garrett's not going to sit forever either the transfer portal guys can go in and out immediately. You could even go to the portal and try to bring another veteran in, like you did with JT Daniels. There are veterans dangling out there. There are, there are guys decommitting every day. You could do that as well. Should they maybe even go that route because you're not sold on anybody yet? Yeah, and that's the world of college athletics right now. Listen, you can jump in the portal. You end up at another school next semester, and you're playing for a completely different coach. Now, let's start right. from the bottom up, all right? So you have Mark Hill. Um, He did not play enough this season. Uh, to not be reassured So if they wanted to still red, reassured him, they could potentially do so. Right. Uh, Garrett Green, we saw a lot from him. He's a great runner. He can manage a football game. Is he the guy to go out every single game in his junior year and play a strict starting quarterback role for WVU? I don't know. Um, we all know he can run the ball. In the Big 12, you have to be able to throw it around. I'm not fact-checking this. Oklahoma, he was, what, 8, 9, 10 of, you know, 16, something like that. You can look it up. But, um, you know, and listen, you have off games. He he did enough to to get the offense in a position to be able to uh, come out with a victory. He was 12 uh, for 22, so you're close. Okay, he, yeah, yeah. He was 12 for 22. He did have the rope to Bryce Ford Wheaton, if you recall, in the end zone. Yeah. That was an impressive throw, and Bryce, by the way, re- declares for the NFL draft, yeah, so he won't, be, he, won't, he won't be around, but they still, have, they still have a lot of weapons that can come back. Sam James actually has another year of eligibility. He was recruited by Dana, that's as insane as that is. They, they, Prather, Prather could come back. <laughs> yeah, Aren't you jealous how many years of college football you could play in the NIL deal money that you can While make? While getting paid. Before you, exactly. Right, while well, getting paid. But he, these guys could come back. Obviously, Rodney Gallagher and several others right now are committed. Jaheim White's committed. There, there could be there could be others. There are others. Trajan Ray is another one. So these guys are committed. These guys could be instant weapons as well. Even C.J. Donaldson, as long as he stays around, which has been another question, but he really emerged this past season. So there's going to be weapons there. The O-line needs to improve. It, it hasn't been good enough, but it'll feel like get better. So... Whoever's going to be there under center will have tons of weapons, but yeah, you got to be able to throw the rock with a, on a consistent basis. And I will tell you, the coaching yeah. staff has been up front that they, they haven't previously felt Garrett Green could do it enough. That's why he didn't get in for Deggy. He he threw more than I would have thought and threw better than I would have thought against Oklahoma and Kansas State and at the end of the season. But I don't know. Yeah, 12 for 22 was that game. And that was his top yeah. game. Mostly as a runner, though. He has so, a dual threat. He's, a, he's an athlete. For sure. Ah, great competitor. Uh, I love him. I mean, listen, yeah. the guy reminds me a lot of myself. Um, and he's that spark plug. I mean, I think West Virginia needed to get him into the game a lot or into the mix a lot sooner um, just to provide a spark, you know, and we started to see it toward the end of the season. Um, but let's not leave JT out of this equation. Um you would like healthy competition, especially at the quarterback's position. Any, any, any spot, center, left guard, right tackle, doesn't matter. You yeah. need healthy competition. 
Now, if I'm JT Daniels, I'm not looking for any promises. I'm not looking for it because I know that competition is going to make me better. All right. So if they're telling me, hey, listen, this is an open competition. There's going to be three guys. You have Garrett, you have um, Nico and yourself. OK, listen, let's 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 go. Let's start this off season. Let's get ready for the 23 season. Um, there's nothing guaranteed. All right. You have to work for it. So if JT was to jump ship because, hey, uh, you're not going to be the starter next year. Although I don't see them making that call this early. It's way too, yeah, way yeah. too early. Haven't even gone through spring yet. Right. Um, I do not see that happening, but the competition is going to make everyone that much better. And that's how you elevate your team. That's how you elevate the room. That's how you elevate the position. Um, it has to be a healthy competition. So listen, yeah. Where or or would you want to throw the wild card in, which a lot of programs are doing these days, and this is exactly what West Virginia did a season ago, where somebody who's not on the roster, who's played somewhere else, and you go to the portal and bring them in, and then it yeah. throws a bomb into what you're doing. The JT Daniels, if we were having this conversation a year ago, nobody had even dreamed of JT Daniels coming to West Virginia. And let's face it, that didn't work out the way they had planned. The plan was for him, which is why you're in this situation. The plan was for him to come in, increase his value, probably then leave, try to get drafted, and then he would hand the keys off to Gary Green or whoever else yep. off of a winning season. They didn't win. He got benched. Garrett came in, was a spark plug. Nico's also played well. And now J.D. Daniels does not have the value to, to make that NFL money right now, so he needs to beef it up. So if he comes back and doesn't play wherever – that's why I think he has to go somewhere else. But if he comes back and doesn't play, it only hurts him. And, yeah, there's the XFL and USFL, and he could do those things after college next season, but they're spring sports. They're not, obviously, in the fall, so it wouldn't, wouldn't matter about WVU. But it's just a catch-22. It's really – I mean, I guess that's the other wild card. Do you, do you think about the portal if you're not fully sold on anybody right now? Because they've proven yeah. they can get someone from the portal. And let's be real. There's going to be disgruntled players across the country, all right? You're going to be able to find a quality guy who was a number two, uh, quite possibly a number one who's getting yeah. pushed by a number two who's ready to make a move. So, yes, you can go out and, you know, bring another guy in. It puts you right back into the same position if you're Garrett Green and Nico Marfield and the coaches <laughs> on the offensive staff because yeah. now those two guys just move up a class. You have another quarterback who came in who's going to be – you know, expected to be number one. So you're right back at square one. You just replace JT Daniel or uh, a player <laughs> yeah. who transferred in with J uh, JT yeah. Daniels leaving out. So, um, yeah, listen, man. And listen, that's why they get paid the big bucks. All right. Those coaches <laughs> make those decisions for a reason. Uh, but I would like to see JT Daniels stay another year, groom the room, uh, get that competition going let Garrett Green develop a little bit more because I do think that he could potentially develop into the starter. Uh, he would need to work on a few things. Okay. As I mentioned, it's a different beast when you're a backup quarterback versus being a starter. You jump in there and a defense can game plan around you. It's completely different. Um, he was able to break off some runs, but you didn't see a bunch of those chunk runs where he was inserted into the game for a series or two because they're not truly prepared for that. When number six comes into the game, all right, listen, let's make sure we're on high alert for the quarterback counters, the quarterback leads. Those running lanes tend to condense, and uh, you just have to find ways to combat it. Um, but, listen, that's what makes the game fun, and Garrett Green's a competitor. I think he he still has a lot more room to grow. Yeah, and what have you seen from, from Nico in that brief appearance there against Oklahoma State? I mean, is he – he obviously yeah, has even less experience, but – him and Garrett are kind of similar in a way. I think the one thing that fans like about Garrett Green is, you know, pumping his fist after the touchdown against Oklahoma. He is he is into the game and brings a lot oh, yeah. of passion. That was part of him being such a spark plug, and he is a full-out athlete, which adds an extra dimension. And as you know, the traditional West Virginia fan is going to say, and they have been saying, that's the, Pat White said it. This is the blueprint. Major Harris, Rasheed Marshall, Pat White, Garrett Green yeah. is similar. So, I mean, the program's had success without the traditional dual threat QB. Geno Smith was not as much of a dual threat. He was more of a – he was off the air raid offense when they won the Orange Bowl. But and he's still utilizing that skill set 
two days. And he is running a little bit now. As well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's getting yeah. it done in Seattle, as amazing as that has been in his NFL resurgence. But yeah, so on to Nico, though. What have you, what did you see good? And then what still needs to work? What does he still need to work on for, for Nico, who doesn't have the experience level, but a lot of hype around Nico? There are a lot of fans that want it to just be Nico's team right now. Yeah. Now, a lot of that I do think was built off of the fact that he was such a high profile recruit. Right. Um, you know, he was just built up to be uh, this this mystical type of player. Um, but listen, as a head coach, as assistants, you understand that the potential for a player to, to truly grow, the ceiling can be high, the upside is high, but you have to be able to make that adjustment. Um High school to college is two completely different games. There's so many different external factors. Once you get onto a college campus, is your mind right? Is your is your preparation the same? High school, listen, you wake up, you go to school, you deal with your high yeah. school teammates, your coach. You get to college, you're away from home. Who knows what's going to happen? Your head could explode and you just, you just forget why you're even on campus. So um, I don't think any coach who truly understands is going to expect for a young guy to come in and, and take over. Now, um, as far as his game, good player, composed. He's gutsy, deep throw early in that um, Oklahoma State game. And I, and I yeah. thought his comfort level was really good for, for a young player. Um, and that's what you want to see because, I mean, for myself, I remember my freshman year, the game moved a million miles per hour. It took me some time to get used to everything. Yes, yeah. I still made plays. Everything was, um, you know, at the end of the day, still football, but it tends to slow down. Uh, for him right now, I think he's at that point. Now he just starts to uh, – he needs to work on the execution. He needs to work on just being a more, little more comfortable in executing – uh, but he he has a, a big upside. He really does. I also think it could be, and this is a glass half full take, because I know a lot of fans, again, wanted to move on from this coaching staff, but that's not reality. And it could actually be a positive for especially Nico and Garrett Green, whoever gets more playing time, or just both of them in general, as long as they're still there, to have continuity with the same staff. Not have to learn a whole yeah. new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, assuming Graham's going to stick around. Just having the continuity with the staff, I think, could be a major deal because that's something that the, a lot of these players are lacking because of the transfer portal and because, because coaches are, are leapfrogging and jumping around as well, which has always happened and it only kind of has fared it up. But it's almost like every year, and fans have said this, and it's hard to disagree that it's almost like I'll, I'll, I'll let me know what the roster is once we kick off because it's different year to year. Yeah, right. So right. to have some continuity is a positive in a way. And that's what you had on the best West Virginia teams, obviously major Harris, Pat white yourself, you guys there for a while, you build yourself up and then become legends. So we'll see Garrett green, still very, very young Nico, even younger. And well, Crowder's there. He hasn't thrown an incompletion yet in the game, obviously not going to really be a starter, but he, who knows, maybe he'll find some spots somewhere else or, he did play against an FCS team this year. And then who knows about JT? Because that, that would be a really aw- – I mean, that would he would be the poster boy transfer portal guy if he's on four teams. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, because he has a name behind him. He, de- yeah. he put up numbers. Listen, if it wasn't for JT, West Virginia would have never been in a pick game. Um, right. You had the fluke pick six at the end. Just a one little miscue. All right. Yeah. Balls run, being returned the other way. Um but yes, if it wasn't for JT, West Virginia is not in a lot of the games that they were in uh, without his leadership, without his, uh, you know, just veteran leadership. He understands the game. Yes, he didn't play perfect, but I do think early in the season, without him at the helm, yeah. West Virginia would have would have been in a much tougher position. Yeah, and I think he played well against Kansas too. They didn't. They did. They were zero two. He played his best games were against Pitt and Kansas, and they didn't win either one of those. But outside yeah. of those plays at the end, yeah, he did play well in most of those games. And I also will say, if it doesn't work out playing, he could have a career as a coach probably because he's a really, really smart kid. Yep. Knows every playbook in the world, even playbooks he's not having to learn and not dealing with. He just know he's, he's it's picture perfect memory in terms of what happened in games. Yeah, and he's very yeah. even Being able to recall everything. Right. Yeah. And the coaching staff always talks about how even Keely is the players have talked about this too. Bryce always mentioned this, this past season, that it doesn't matter whether you're up 14 down 14, first quarter, fourth quarter, JT is just laid back. He has that California cool in him and he is just 
even keel and not bothered about anything. And, and that's, you know, that's what you get by being a veteran. But he apparently was like that even when he was younger. That's a natural thing that you like to have in your yeah. quarterback and your leader. So that's a positive for him. You just yeah. so even keel. But they had to go to green at some point when the season was going nowhere. He was a spark plug. He didn't play the year before. So it was nice to see it. It was positive to get those guys time, especially since they didn't make a bowl game. But it'll be interesting now what happens here moving forward. Now, Rashid, as we round this out, because the season's over now, five and seven, you miss a bowl game. Only one of two, one of two teams in the Big 12 that doesn't get to a bowl game this year. Iowa State, the other, and they actually beat West Virginia. That's an embarrassing thing for the Mountaineers, for sure. 15th winning his program to be miss, missing yeah. a bowl game here. Yeah. You get in last year, you don't win that bowl game. You had to win out this year at the end of the season because of the situation you put yourself in. You end up losing one of those games and, and against Kansas State, and then you don't have a chance at, at a bowl. You have some big wins this year, oddly speaking, but also some real bad losses. You didn't show up in certain games. It was rough. Three out of four years losing seasons, not acceptable either. So, obviously – the season didn't go well. So any final thoughts from yourself on this roller coaster ride of a poor season from the Mountaineers for 2022, the future of the program It's now under a new athletic director, Neil Brown is still going to be there. But as Pat McAfee said, I think he could do it. There's reason maybe to trust. They do have a young team and some players coming back. You don't know about the portal, but if he doesn't get it done, he's then going to be fired. And then a new AD is hiring his guy. He'll be able to hire his guy and that'll be his guy and he'll be the new head coach. So it's not like Brown has forever here. This probably is a wait and see for one more season for recruiting or whatever the reasons. What are your final thoughts now? We probably yeah. maybe, well, maybe we we'll do more of these, but if we don't, just your final thoughts on this season and uh, the yeah. ride that it has been, because it has been a ride. <laughs> Definitely some ups and downs, man. Oh, a lot of up and down, ups and downs, actually. Um, you know, to close out the season with the win over Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, um, you know, it's strange because if you, if you think about a team that went say three for 13 on third down, they had three turnovers, but they were still able to manage to win the game some way, somehow yeah. that's almost what the grand scheme at the end of the season was like, like, okay. Um, you know, we started out, we didn't beat Pitt, just some ups and downs, but you're still able to squeak out these two marquee wins that I've been waiting for since West Virginia got into the Big 12 because I always compared it to, okay, listen, with a lot of the teams that I played on, we were able to beat some of the top dogs. We took Miami down to the wire. We handled Virginia Tech at home away. Uh, Pitt was one of the top dogs in the conference, handled them uh, convincingly home and away. When was West Virginia going to be able to get those marquee wins over the top dogs in the conference? Finally knocked it out. Now, did anyone see that coming? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, what a year and, to do it in. Yeah. Yeah, and think about all the experts that said, listen, West Virginia is not going to win another game from this point at Virginia Tech moving forward. And you beat Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. So credit to West Virginia for that. But listen, like I said, you take the momentum. You take that into the offseason. Garrett Green had a fabulous, and now we keep talking about him, bringing him up, but he had a fabulous season, uh, especially closing it out. That's momentum. You carry it. A lot of the guys who uh, was able to step into some roles, make some plays, carry that momentum going into the season. The whole team has to ride that wave from Oklahoma State's victory into the offseason through the spring, and, and the coaches have to push that. Now, we know how the portal works. There's going to be guys added to this roster all the way up until next summer. All right. You find the pieces that fit. You remove the guys who don't want to be there and you, you, you form the best team possible. Yeah. You don't know what this team could look like next year because <laughs> of the portal. And that's right. what we're living in right now. Right. Guys are going to be added all the way up until the end of the summer. And uh, yeah, you just, you know, you, you work with the guys that you have right now, you build around them and uh, continue to get that confidence up, continue to work in the offseason because a lot of the uh, a lot of the skill work that you do in the offseason, that's where you truly elevate your game. You can get better during the season, but it's the offseason. It's the weight room. It's the skill development that's going to propel your game to the next season. I made the most growth uh, in the offseasons, not necessarily during the season. So, yeah, you just have to take advantage of it. But um, I thought they closed it out on a high note, and that's what they needed. Yeah, they did close on a higher note. I think a higher note than a lot of people thought they would. And it could have went another direction, certainly, because it's probably hard to get yourself up to care that much 
when bowl eligibility is no longer in play for you, especially for that last week. So that was a positive, but yeah, you just yeah. don't know the roster. You don't know what's going to happen. You certainly don't know who's going to start. You don't know who's going to come in and out. It's all going to change. There's windows now. It's a little tighter than it was last year, but it's still the wild, wild west out there. And yes, it, 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 you know, you want to try to get your guys in as early as possible because when you have QBs coming in in May or June, it is hard to develop chemistry and JT was fine early in the season, but you want to try to have as much continuity as possible. So yeah. maybe that's the glass half full take and that's the bright spot of keeping things moving and running it back with this staff. But obviously if they don't get it done again, there won't be a conversation. There won't be a There'll debate. Be some changes have, next year. Yeah, yeah. there'll absolutely be some changes. And either way, I think to summarize, especially this show, if you are a former Mountaineer player, if you are a former Rashid Marshall type and they call you, pick up the phone, talk to them, come on down. Definitely. If you want to be involved and they're not calling you, then I know you shouldn't have to do this because you're who you are and they should be reaching out. But I, I you know, don't feel anything about reaching out to them and saying, hey, you should have called me, but I want to come down there. So let's get me down there. They're going to get you some tickets. They'll bring you down. I can't imagine them saying no. And there's so many resources of former players. Obviously, Pat McAfee has the, the biggest mouthpiece. He's, he's at the top, and then you go on down. So the program got to utilize them. And it is also on the program that you said the perfect word. You got to repair some of these relationships, which I think actually Shane Lyons and Neil Brown tried to do several years ago. You mentioned bringing yourself down, getting a Big 12 jersey. It's in our logo, letting us do that. A lot of cool things. You're involved with the Mountaineer Athletic Club. But – you got to maintain the relationships. So yeah. I think a lot of these former, it seems like a lot of the former players are saying that they get a phone call, they're brought to a game, they don't hear from anybody for three years. You got to maintain the relationship as well. That is on the university to main, maintain it and maybe call them for one or two games a year. If they're not calling you, then you pick up the phone because it is important to have that relationship with those former great players. There's so many like yourself that this program has as a resource that are still young enough to do something of note and are close by and want to be involved. It's not yeah. like, you're having to harken back to 60 years earlier. You got you got some guys that can come around and talk to these kids that are still relevant. You probably even throw a pass or two. There's right? one other thing I want to say about that as well. For everything that I did on the football field, for all the good relationships that I have uh, at WVU, I would never, never in a million years expect or feel like I'm entitled for someone to pick up the phone to call me. That was years ago, you know? Um, would it be nice? Yes. But time waits for no one. All right. Yeah. Three years. Like you mentioned something about three years. It feels like three years in reality. It's been like 13. It's been 15 years, yeah. you know? So it's been a lot of time as fresh as those memories are. There's been a lot of time that has passed. All right. There's been a lot of different changes to administration. You have to keep things alive. Pick up the phone, call them. <laughs> I would never expect them to to pick up the phone. I get a call and say, "Hey, uh, Rashid, we haven't talked we haven't talked to you in a while. Just want to make sure you're alive." Listen, there's bigger <laughs> fish to fry. I'm done. It's over. You know that limelight is over for me. The bright light is yeah. is now dim. I'm no longer a, a you know a big figure for right. them to feel like they need to pick up the phone to call me. Luckily, I'm in a position to where I do have relationships still and still, but. If those things weren't in place, I wouldn't feel like I was owed anything from that university. It's just me. Yeah, and that, that's a great perspective because that's definitely true, 100%. It definitely is a two-way street. You're definitely going to maintain them, but that's on both sides. And maybe there are you know, some some that are entitled, that feel entitled. And yeah, it's hard to give that limelight up, though. It probably is. They're thinking about, oh, 10 years ago, I did this, I did this. But unfortunately, yeah, different administration, different coaches, I mean, many of these players didn't put any rings on Neil Brown's finger, so he's going to appreciate it. But, you know, it's not like he was there. So, yeah. But at the end of the day, it needs repaired. Uh, you know, honestly, I think the mature – if you're the university, I'll speak as, as, as an alum who didn't play. It, it, everything you're saying is correct. But say you're the university and you feel like a former player is complaining unjustly and maybe they do come off entitled and you call them once every few years, but you shouldn't have to send them a Christmas card or send them a, a you know a basket of cookies every month just to check in. But if that would it that's what if that's what it takes for a while, then maybe suck up the pride and do it because you need to have these relationships and you don't want to have a player of note say no, I won't come down there because they're bitter about something somebody else did years earlier which feels like it's a little bit of the situation right now. And you certainly don't want Pat McAfee saying he didn't feel welcome for a decade 
Like, was he really not welcome? I don't know. I cannot imagine someone from W called him and told him, don't you dare come. But he didn't feel welcome. So so make him feel welcome. And then yeah. have him come. Try to maintain it. Don't have it be once every four years. And and maybe that can be a mentorship with these young athletes. Obviously, you can't you know do anything illegal tampering-wise. But with NIL, some of these guys – Pat McAfee might start an NIL company here soon. He's I was done everything just else. about to say the same thing. So, so like, I mean, like if he's running an NIL company and doesn't have any West Virginia athletes, that's your own problem. So, yeah. so again, I know you got the Country Roads Trust, but who knows? That's like Listen, the next let, step let's, let's take it a, a, a step further, all right? Uh, we talked about this. Rim Baker is going on 43 years old, right? Okay. A little younger. This is not a knock on Shane Lyons. Uh, Rin, maybe a little more energetic, little – uh, you know, closer to the to the younger generation of, of players. He understands and he says, okay, listen, I'm going to prioritize bringing some alumni back. You have fresher ideas. You have new ideas, ways to get alumni back amongst all sports, not just football. So that's one of the other things that could be an upside for bringing Rim Baker in. Who knows? You know, um, it's all about keeping the ideas fresh, being able to find ways to generate new ideas and, and keep things, um, you know, you have to be progressive and Hey, I think he might be the guy to do it. There you go. I think he's, I think Ren Baker is progressive enough that he is the right fit. I think that's the perfect way to end this show. And I think, I think that's, that summarizes my opinion of it. The, I think he's progressive enough in a modern sense of NAL money, yeah. close in age, hip on social media which sounds funny to say but it is actually an important thing neil brown's actually done Very with that as well yeah so to have that aptitude is a positive thing from ren baker and everybody at north texas i had a guy who covered north texas for years sings his praises they all thought he would eventually get a power five job seems like a national progression for him doesn't matter if he has the ties or not it seems like he's thrilled about being there so he has motivation too this is his first major power five in terms of where he is the man in charge he's been under other people at missouri and memphis but he's the man in charge now so he has pressure to get it done too if it fails he's not gonna get another one so everyone got pressure but maybe you know no pressure no diamonds that's it we all have a phrase, job that, to do at the end right of the day. yeah so that, that 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 i think that phrase definitely works for this that was Rashid Marshall is Rashid Marshall here of all three phases brought to you by WV Sports Now. Again, you can find us everywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, Stitcher, etc. As well, subscribe to our channel here and check out our site at WVSportsNow.com for all of our coverage of the West Virginia football program, but also basketball and everything else, Mountaineers. That'll do it for this episode of the show. We'll see if we do talk to you again soon. Certainly, I'll be talking to Rashid and uh, – Maybe I'll have Mike Logan. Uh, we'll have someone with Mike Logan as well. Because yeah, you, you we'll said you guys it. were talking we'll about me. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll do a three-man three thing. We'll bring on Mike uh, to talk here as well. But nonetheless, this has been All Three Phases by WV Sports Now.